Okay, this video is going to pick up after you've learned how to do your journal entries for a manufacturing company under job order costing and where you're at the point where you're ready to allocate your manufacturing overhead to the job. So just as a review, first we had um, direct materials that we were able to trace to a job, so we were able to add those to the job as they occurred, and then we were going to have direct labor, okay? And both of those, as they go into process, would go into an inventory category called work in process. Then you have this factory overhead, otherwise known as manufacturing overhead. That was going to be all of your costs that were indirect. So anything that could not be traced to the job went to factory overhead. So during the period we've been accumulating costs in factory overhead. For example, we would debit manufacturing overhead for depreciation and the other side would be accumulated depreciation. We would also debit manufacturing overhead for plant utilities. I'm making up these numbers. You would credit either cash or accounts payable for those plant utilities. You would debit manufacturing overhead for plant janitor salaries because those are indirect. And you would credit salaries payable for that or wages payable. Um, you would debit factory overhead for plant property taxes, and you would credit cash for either plat, um, property tax payable. So all these indirect costs have been accumulating. So at the end of the period, you're going to look at your total, and let's see what we have here. All right, in this case, we have 36500 Somehow or another, we need to assign those indirect costs to each job. We're going to do that using a ratio. It's going to be called predetermined manufacturing overhead rate. All right, it's going to be made up of a numerator and a denominator. On top, we're going to have estimated factory overhead, and on the bottom, we're going to have estimated base, and we'll talk about what both of those are. Let me draw a line so that we can tell that this is a fraction. All right, so estimated factory overhead. The reason that we're going to use estimated is because we need to do this before we know what the overhead actually is. So we're going to have an estimated amount. There are several ways that the problems in the book will tell you that it's estimated. They may say budgeted, they may say estimated, or they may say we expect factory overhead to be Okay, but all those will tell you that it was to be estimated. All right, estimated base is going to be several things. It could be direct labor hours. It could be direct labor, the dollar amount. It could be machine hours. Whatever it is, it's decided by the company um, what would be the best indicator to find out how much we want to allocate to the job. So whatever um, drives the costs of that job would be the most appropriate base. So let's just pretend like we do direct labor hours in this case. Okay, so let's say that the problem says that our estimated factory overhead is going to be $38,000. That's how much we estimated. And we're going to estimate that our base is going to be 40 direct labor hours. All right, so then when we divide this, 38,000 divided by 40, we're going to get our rate. And this is known as our predetermined manufacturing overhead rate. All right, we're going to use that rate to allocate our manufacturing overhead. All right, so this is our rate, right, 950. So what we're going to do is we're going to take that, and then when we know our actual base, in other words, how many direct labor hours were actually used, then we're going to multiply it. All right, so the second step of this is to multiply our rate times our actual base. Okay, so you'll need to remember those two steps. The first step is to calculate predetermined manufacturing overhead rate. Then the second step is to take that rate times your actual base. All right, so let's say that our actual base is 50. So we're going to say 950, our rate, times 
50 um, hours, that is what we decided that our actual base would be. And we're going to see that we need to allocate 47,500. All right, so what that means is that the journal entry is going to be a debit of 47,500, 47,500 to work in process. In other words, we're putting it where all those other direct labor costs have been sitting because now we're allocating it straight to the job. So you would take it to a certain job and put it in work in process. You're going to take it out of manufacturing overhead. Okay, as you can tell, we did not take out the exact right amount, right? We're actually going to be over allocated here because, look, we're left with a credit balance in our manufacturing overhead account. That is because these are all estimates, so they're not going to work out perfectly. If it was perfect, then we would have credited out 36500 but we can't do that because we didn't know. Plus, this is a way to assign different amounts to jobs. So, after we do this, and it's at the end of the period, we want to close manufacturing overhead. What that means is we want to get the balance down to zero to start over, and we are going to take the difference in 36500 and 47500 and put it to cost of goods sold. So, we end up having a credit balance. Let's see what our balance is exactly so we can see. Well, let's do another bottom we are left with. Okay, so we're over allocated by 11000 So, to fix that, basically, we need to debit manufacturing overhead. And then we need to credit cost of goods sold because we're going to just assume that that all has been sold. So that will always be your journal entry um, if this is the method that you're using, which is what we're going to use in this book. So it's going to be for $11,000 and that's going to get your balance down to zero. If you had been under allocated, this entry would be reversed. You would have needed a credit here, so therefore you would need a debit to here. Now the test likes to ask you questions such as this. If you're over allocated, that's what we were. What does that do to your net income? Well, if you look at this, if we decreased our cost of goods sold, which is an expense, if we were over allocated and we decreased an expense, then that would increase your net income. So if you just think through the journal entries, you'll get to the right answer. The opposite of that would be if you had been under allocated, you would have debited cost of goods sold. That would have had a decrease on net income. So those are the types of questions that they can ask. Okay, to wrap this up, what I'd like to show now is how this allocation works to figure out how much a job costs. So let's say that we were making diamond rings again. We would have taken our direct materials. I'm going to say that our diamond cost us, I don't know, $15,000. This is going to be one very expensive diamond ring. I don't think it's even, um, uh, what's it called? I don't think it's very realistic. But anyway, then our direct labor, let's say that we paid our uh, people working on our diamond ring uh, $3,000 and then we would take the amount of factory overhead that we had put into work in process in this case it looks like 47500 and when you add up all those costs you would find out how much is assigned to that job so we would want to sell this ring for over 65500 I know that's a very expensive ring um, but that's how that would work. You would add up all those costs. And again, the only way to assign those to a job is to allocate that factory overhead, just as we've done using the predetermined manufacturing overhead rate.